Now we are going to mix our resin. The resin we have specifically, you want a one-to-one -one ratio. We have done the measuring for you, but if you do want to be very specific, you can measure it out as well, and we do have the measurements on the side of the cup. But you should be able to just pour all of resin A and all of resin B into the cup and mix them together. We have this foil seal on the resin to avoid having it spill in transit. I like using the toothpick looking stick to help get the foil off. You can start with resin A or with resin B. It doesn't really matter, we will be mixing them completely together. As you start to pour resin A in, you'll notice that it's going to take a little bit of time and that's okay. You really want to make sure that you let all of it go into your mixing cup. Um, so just let it drip and then pour in resin B. As you pour in the other resin, you'll start to notice that they're two different consistencies. They separate right away. That's why our next step will be mixing and you'll want to mix thoroughly because resin in general doesn't really want to mix together. It wants to stay separate like water and oil. Your next step is you're going to mix these completely together. It can take about two, maybe even three minutes, and you're just gonna go nice and slow. You'll notice that there are a few bubbles in your resin, but you don't wanna to make too many of them. Some bu bubbles are okay, and really how we're using it, bubbles aren't going to ruin your journal cover or your keychains. As you look at it, you'll start to see how they're mixing together a little bit. It's sort of pretty. The next part is mixing your colors. We do recommend following the ratios that we provided in the instructions that I'm about to go over. You can make your own ratios. If you don't want any white, you can do a complete split of half clear with glitter and half pink. Okay, so for ours, we are going to do to make them a little bit even to start and then I'll put my remaining resin into the two that I want the most of. So the first one will be my clear with glitter, the second one will be my pink, okay. and my third one is going to be my white. Okay. When working with resin, as soon as you mix the two together, it does start a chemical reaction and will begin to harden. So you do have a time limit of how much um, time you're given to complete your journal and your keychains. You have about 45 minutes. You could even have a little bit more, but you just want to keep working on it and not step away for too long. In the kit, we gave you four popsicle sticks or wooden craft sticks and then two uh, pointed craft sticks. These you usually will use towards the end, um, and these are used for mixing. So we've used one already for the A and B, and then one stick per cup for mixing your colors. The first one we are going to do will be the glitter. We give you a lot more glitter and a lot more colorant than you need, so you can use these for other projects as well. When adding in the glitter, similar to the colorant, it can impact the consistency of it. So you really don't want to use too much more than what we recommend, uh, but you can also eyeball it when you're working on your project at home, see if it looks similar to what this looks like. We recommend three scoops of glitter for this ratio of the different cups, and we use our popsicle stick or wood craft stick for this one. You can also just pour it in if you want to. This makes it a little bit easier to not over pour because glitter can go in really fast. And you'll see as I start mixing, I might decide to put a little extra splash in these. Same with mixing your A and B resin together. You don't want to mix too fast and create air bubbles. We're just trying to get it slightly mixed so that it all incorporates. And I am going to put an extra little dash of glitter. This is where it gets tricky because I'm going to try to just pour a little bit in. That was about one additional popsicle stick, so you could really go up to four. For pink, we are putting eight drops of the pink colorant into it. Now with this, when you take the top off, this white piece isn't going to stick down. So I have dropped this into my resin multiple times. Feel free to take that off to avoid it, or you can always uh, dig it out with a popsicle stick later if you need to. that the 
the smallest amount, or what looks like the smallest amount. Make a pretty big impact. Well, in the final cup, we will do six drops of white in. The white, once again, don't put too many drops in. You can always do less drops than what we show if you want it to be a little bit uh, smokier looking, wispier. If you wanted to not have a full white but you wanted more of a light pink, you could combine a couple of drops of pink and a couple of drops of white uh, to get a light pink instead of white. Uh, next, I'm going to move a few things out of the way because the next part is pouring. For the mold, you have the main area for the journal cover, and then you have the three charms on the side. As you fill them in, just remember that your charms are there. There have been plenty of tests where I've forgotten a little bit until the end that I needed to fill those in as well. From here, it's really up to you. Let your inspiration take you. You can always calculate it in advance, but one thing to keep in mind is resin has a little bit of a mind of its own. It will spread as it goes, as it hardens. Um, so you typically won't get super crisp lines with this resin, but it will sort of blend together to create a really cool, wispy um, design. When you're filling your keychains and your charms, you can also use your popsicle stick or woodcraft stick to scoop and fill in the resin when there's just a little bit of space to fill. You can use the wood craft stick, the pointed one, to also fill in any spots in the keychains or to swirl together your colors once you're done. As I mentioned before, the resin has a little bit of a mind of its own, so just keep that in mind as you're swirling that your final product, once it's hardened, might not look exactly how it did when you were done swirling things together. When you are done filling your mold, you'll want to put it somewhere for 24 to 48 hours so that it can harden. If it's okay where it is, feel free to keep it there, um, but that's why it's nice to have a tray so that we can move it somewhere else. To avoid getting dust in it, we're gonna put something over the top of this just to protect any particles from getting in here. You don't have to do it, it is completely optional, but I think we're gonna do that and set this off to the side. 